Hey out there in slot car land, how's everybody doing this fine week? Hope you've had safe two weeks. Hope everybody's doing all right. Um, hope everybody's having a great summer. Today we're going to talk about tools and what you should have in your slot car box and what is if you have the money and you really want to get delve into tuning is something other tools that you must need and should have. Um, first off, though, I want to send out a big thanks. I thanked him on the Slot Car Crazy on Facebook, but I wanted to thank everybody on the video. I want to thank Ted Baker. Um, he contacted me after the last video and asked if I wanted a piece of sample Max Track, which that's what this is. This is a commercially made custom routed track. This is a sample piece of a four lane. As you can see it's it, this stuff is crystal smooth it's the same stuff that everybody uses i believe and he asked me if i wanted it and i said yeah sure i'll take it It'd be something good for the channel something good to show you guys what and he goes okay i'll send it to you and then he also said as a thanks for what we do here on youtube he says i'm gonna send you and your son a couple of cars so he sent us a uh, magnet traction specialty chassis um, piece tank which is really cool. I've been wanting one of these. I've been toying with buying one of these off of eBay. And uh, now I don't have to. I've got one of my own. And then he sent us this really nice uh, Ford uh, rally car. Uh, it's a G Plus chassis. So, and my son took this one. So he, he, needed, he wanted another full body G Plus chassis. So he took that one. So I want to thank Ted Baker for going above and beyond. Uh, giving us a couple of cars and I want to say thank you for that so um, let's get started on tools um, tilt this down here a little bit I'm gonna have to find a new tripod for my GoPro I'm gonna do a couple of interesting things with it too so hopefully I get it in the shot um, first off you know as everybody knows you should have a good assortment of your, you know, dual screwdrivers, both Phillips and straight. You never know when you're going to need them. You never know when they're going to come in handy. So that's that. Those are a definite must. A um, couple other musts: Zacto knife, of course, really with a really good blade. Um, a file. Never know when it's going to come in handy. Toothbrush. For cleaning parts, and if you can, another one that's kind of neat to have is a jewel toothbrush, as a jewel brush. This gets into some tight places, like uh, gears and and axle gears and pinion gears, and it's good. Also, another good one to have in your box to uh, to have in there. Another must: emery board for truing and 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 uh, smoothing out rubber tires. Another good good thing to have in your box um if you're if you have uh if you have g plus cars sorry about the camera there i'm gonna keep it tilted up here for a little bit um if you have g plus cars bell end tool whether it's like the one i showed you i made or one you buy you can't get them bell ends on them armatures very easy without one so that's another definite must um another must i think you should have is a dremel um, for everything from bodies and, and, you know, screwing out wheel wells and especially if you're buying, uh, resin bodies that you've gotten off of eBay or from anybody else, if smoothing them out, uh, cutting wheels, you know, all of that stuff. That's a definite, that's a definite must to have. Um. Um, if you remember way back when, when I was showing you guys some of the tune videos, um, the, the, when we tuned the T-Jet and when we did the uh, G-Plus cars and stuff, I made a comment that I use a wire brush for cleaning armatures and, and everything on the car. Um, when, we, I went, when I went to the fray back in 2002, that's what everybody was using. They were using wire brushes. And my group, for the longest time, used wire brushes. When we went back this year, we found out that they're, they've changed. And you find these things out when you go to big events where there's a ton of slot car guys. 
you find out the nuances that have changed and things that they found and then it's filtered down to their friends and then it's filtered down there but if you don't go it never filters or nobody in your group goes it never filters down to you so what they're using now to clean arm especially armatures and um pickup shoes um i'm still you can still use your wire brush for cleaning idler metal idler gears and your your top gears on your t-jet chassis uh, motor plates and all that though though you're gonna have to use the the metal one to get a really nice shine on your gears but they have switched to using these um plastic and this is a this is a uh uh more uh rough grate of it is these what are these these are what grit are these considered um the blue or the blue is considered 400 grit and you can't buy these at home depot or lowe's i've looked the only the finest one you can find is these brown ones which is probably uh really coarse grit i'm not sure what the grit was i'd have to look it up i bought this one thinking it'd work but it's a little too rough for what we're doing um i got these from one stop slot shop and they're they're 550 for what i have here i haven't installed them. this is one we got from uh from gill at the fray that we're still using it's still still got a little bit to it so we're still using it we haven't changed over yet um also uh micro mark also carries them um, except theirs i think is a full set yeah it's a full set so they want they give you everything from uh where it they don't list the grits on here oh 82 uh an 80 a 220 and a 400 and uh, they get it's a 38 piece set total so they that's a little more spendy if you go to one stop slot shop you can get two 220 grit and 400 grit which is the blue the 220 is a maroon color so and then this is probably the brown i think it's probably an 80 so it's a little cheaper to go to one stop slot shop to get them but that's what we're using on our armatures and our pickup shoes now so now we're going to get into some things that I think you should have when you for for building any kind of chassis you want to build. First, the first thing you should have is a night is a gear puller, wheel puller. Um, I have found that this doesn't work on all gear uh, on all um, on all gears. Um, I got these this. And the other two things I'm going to show you in a minute, I got from RTHO. Um, let's see, tools. Um, this little gear puller is 15 bucks. Um, they show it pulling gears on the on the website, as you can see right here. Um, but the one that we should have bought, and we're probably going to end up purchasing, is. This one right here, which is a $60 one, we'll probably get that down the road. Because um, it's, this one doesn't, it works all right, but it doesn't work great. It works great for taking off wheels and stuff, but outside of that, it's it's not very good. But still still worth buying for pulling, for pulling your, your wheels and stuff off without having to use a screwdriver and maybe bending an axle or, you know, something else. If you're building cars, something you definitely should have is a wheel press. Um, most common ones you find at the hobby store is this one right here, but it, it's limited on what you can, you can use on it, have what, what uh, diameter wheels you can put on. Um, like the little, these little, uh, uh, what are we using here? Wizard tires that we use on the fray cars are, are too small to put on with this. Um, if you guys saw, I used this, and I think they're 2125s, the BSRT tires, you saw me use this. It fits. That's about as small as you can go on with, with one of these. Um, what you should get, and I got, I think I got this one also from, um, did I get this from One Stop Slot Shop, or did I get this from... Um, no, I think I got this from Dynamic Armatures, if I remember right. Oops. 
uh, let me see if I can find it on here. But this one is interchangeable. Um, you can pull out the uh, the end and install another. Install. Am I using the right size? No, no not using the right size. Install a smaller one. Um, as you can see, they've got you've got different adapters for for this for this end here, and then you've got these which are little cups that fit on this end after, after you put this end tire on. So when you're putting the other tire on, when you've got it on the chassis, you put that one on this end and get it on there. So this one, you can do any size tire out there with this. All right, where is Dynamic Armatures? With uh, any tires you buy from anywhere. There it is. This one will do it from scale from scale engineering. Um, I got mine from whoop, from one stop from a Dynamic Armatures. Um, it's twenty bucks. As it comes, it comes like this. This is the one it comes with. You don't get anything on this end. Um, the adapter kit is another is another twenty bucks. So forty dollars will get you completely set up to put on any size wheel and tire you want and then if you want to spend another 20 they they have a uh, uh, an adapter rack that can store all your all your adapted pieces on so so 60 bucks to get you the whole ball of wax if you want 40 bucks will get you everything you need to put on tires and wheels on chassis so that's a definite I'd recommend I wouldn't recommend this I would recommend spending the extra money and go with the engineering, the scale engineering one, because that way it'll cover any car you're working on. Um, another thing you should have in your box, D battery, so you can test your cars. Um, this is basically a good thing for when your cars have been sitting in your box for a while. Um, just kind of put the battery on it, let the motor, let the motor warm up a little bit. As you guys know, if your cars have been sitting for a really long time, and you first put them on a tractor, like you know the D battery helps get it get it get it a little kickstart there. Um, something else you should have if you can afford it, and this isn't a metal one. This is a a, a plastic one that a friend of ours had made. Is a tech block. Um, I think. Now they don't list one here on Dynamic Armatures. Um, I know RTHO makes a really nice one, and there is some out there that actually have two grooves. They have a groove on this end which is the tech block side, and they have a groove on this end, which is a more, almost like a, uh, a leveling pad for a real race car. So you can put your car on here, and it's really flat, really smooth, really level, and you can make sure if the body has any tilt or any, or whether you've got a wheel off the ground or if the chassis's been tweaked or something. You can also use this end on them for putting axles through your chassis to do the exact same thing to make sure that the chassis flat. Sometimes if it's not flat here, it may not be it may not be the the chassis. It might be your axle. So if you take it completely apart, put the bars in, and set it on here, and if the chassis is flat, it's not your chassis. It's probably an axle or a wheel or something along those lines. So this is a definite must, especially if you're racing. If you're going to races, you gotta make sure your car passes through the tech block easily. Usually when you're at a race, they'll do this and make sure it passes through without being stopped or anything. So if you're ra going to races or anything, you need to make sure your car will pass through a tech block. So it's it's better to find out before the car goes through tech whether or not it's going to pass through your tech block. So they do that at the fray. They probably do that at other big races. So that's something else that's a definite must you, you're going to have to have. If you're doing a lot of T-Jet work... And we're going to be talking about this down the road. Um, the next episode, we're going to be talking about fray cars and why fray cars are so fast. Um, I have one coming. Supposedly, it is fray ready. I bought it off of eBay for 45 bucks. It's coming out of San Diego, which is a very large fray area down south of, of you know, the state of California is where the fray's at. So hopefully we'll get that car. We'll compare that car to our cars and see how far we have to go to get our cars up to snuff. So, but if you're doing a lot of uh, T-Jet work, you're going to need one of these. This is a gear press. Has interchangeable 
anvils on the end. This one is your rear. This one is your rear top gear. Um, and then we've got your. We've got two other sides, a 14 and a 12. 12s for your. This one is for your your top gear here. And then the little one. This one here is for your bottom gear underneath your top gear on the back of the chassis back there. So, um, it's good for installing gears. It's also good for tightening your gears. That's something we're going to talk about when we go into the T-Jet thing is to tighten your gear on top of your armature so your motor's not... Because if you watch a, 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 a T-Jet chassis, when, you're, when you spin the motor... It, it'll spin straight, but once it starts slowing down, it'll start the armature will start tilting from side to side, and you don't want that. You want your tr your motor to spin completely true, 100% all the way through the rotation, even when it starts to slow down. So this will help with that without having to get the motor trued and balanced. Um, this is probably this is probably one of the cheaper ways to do it. Um, a true and balanced armature runs you anywhere between, I think, the cheapest I have found, I think, is 23 bucks to 30 bucks, depending on who you're getting it from. But this comes in really handy if you're building T-Jet chassis. I haven't tried it on a Magna Traction car yet, so I'll let you guys know on that. But that this is a definite must if you're working, especially if you're building fray cars and you're, you're going to races with fray cars or... Um, super stock cars as they're known in some some circles depending on who you race with basically a super stock t-jet and a fray t-jet are almost the same thing I, I think there's a couple of rule differences but outside of that there's not a whole hell of a lot uh, let me get an arm when we haven't when we haven't done yet this is another tool you're gonna want if you're working with t-jets this is an idler gear post expander that has, there's a little uh, tip inside there. And what you do is, let's get a, uh-oh, my divider came out. What you do is you take your armature, whoop, don't drop it. You put your armature in there, and as you can see, it locks in. You take this and you screw this down, and you make sure you have your idler gear in there. And you screw this down, and it connects with the top of the, the idler post that the idler gear sits on. And you just kind of tighten it, and then shake it, and see if you hear the, the gear moving up and down. Tighten it a little more, tighten it a little more. And what it does is it expands the top of the idler gear post, and keeps the idler gear from floating up and down. Because if it's floating up and down, you're losing energy... With it floating up and down because you're losing your 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 true mesh of your gears so this is a definite if you're if you're building fast you want to build fast cars fast fray cars um depending on your stock t-jet rules whether you will let anybody do that um i think in our group we're not going to allow it um let's see if we did one here yeah see this is this is what it looks like after you've done it there's a little hole right there in the center of the idler gear post and it just expands it and keeps that idler gear from floating it keeps you losing your your connections and your energy from if the if it's spending energy going up and down you're not putting that energy through the rear through the rear axle through the rear tires onto the racetrack so and sometimes these are a little hard to get out there we go so that's a definite Definite must. This one also came from RTHO. Um, I'm bouncing around here on the Kindle. This one's kind of spendy. If I remember right, this is 60 bucks. So, you know, they are kind of spendy. But if you want to build, if you want to build competitive cars, sometimes you gotta, you gotta fork in the tool. Now, one of the other ones that I think you should have, and this is the most expensive one we purchased, is this right here. This is from um, VRP Slot Car Racing. Basically, this is a chassis dyno for a T-Jet car. What you do with this, and let's, we'll, uh, let's see if I can get it. Okay, this is where the experimenting is going to start. Let's see what we get when we do this. 
We'll get right down here close. So what this does is this simulates a car on the track. You got a roller here that the rear wheels sit on. You've got a uh, two. You got a slit here for different chassis, and then you got a hole. The hole is for your T jets. The slider is for other chassis. We have found that a, uh, a Mega Traction, a, a Mega G Plus car will not fit on here. It's too long. But any other chassis you can you can put on here. And what you do is you take your your car. Put it on here, and you set it on the roller, and then it gives you your readout up here on top. The higher this readout on the on the on the uh, dyno, the faster the car is going to go on the racetrack. So as you can see, this car's turn in about an eight seven is about as high as it's going to go. I'm still working on this car. We're still tuning. Um, some of the cars at the fray were turning upwards of 1.6 on a dyno, so that shows you how far we need to go. This is my hop, my m most hopped up one right now, and as you can see, uh oh, something's happened. This car was up over one when I got done tuning it, so something, something has occurred. You can see it's only turning about a 196 or a 0.96. Let's, uh, let's try. The, this is one I'm still working on. Woo! All right, what is going on here? There we go. So, as you can see, I've still got some work to do. Let me go grab my son's. Hold on. We'll go get my son's car here. He's, he's been tuning up a storm on his cars. We'll show you where one of his is at right now. Is it this one? Let's try this one. There we go. You can see he's got this one up over one, turning about a 1.03. Was that a five? Two, four. So a 104. This is his car that he got help with at the fray. Dang it. And as you can see right now, this is our fastest car right now, and it's up over a 120, it's like a 124. So as you can see, there's a lot of work that goes into tuning these cars, and we'll get we'll get into that in the next episode. We'll talk about what they're doing to make these cars so fast. But that this thing really comes in handy when you're tuning when you're tuning your cars it'll work on it'll work on most anything this is our you can see that's a G plus car so we can use this in videos too we can take the chassis that we get when we're comparing different chassis and put them on here and show you what different chassis will turn that's the super G plus this is a super, super magnet traction car. This all this chat this chassis dyno will also help you with um, when you put your car on it with it um, watching it bounce around a lot. Let's see here. You can see how the the car is vibrating a little bit. Um, if, if, if you put it on here and it's really bouncing around the place, you probably have a bent axle somewhere or an out-of-around wheel or something. So this is another thing to to uh, figure out where that is. You want your chassis to look, to look like this, to be really calm. You can see it's got a little side-to-side -side movement, but up and down it's pretty, pretty calm in that manner. You want your car to be extremely smooth. Whether you don't want it bouncing around, you want it glued to that racetrack, putting the power to the racetrack. 
I think I'm getting a little bit of a cold here. So like I said, this is the bottom of the line um, dyno. This is 160 bucks. They do have, um, move the camera back up here. They do have uh, higher expensive ones on there, up over $200 as well. But this one is what most people, uh, we saw at the, t at, the, at the fray, most of the guys had this dyno right here. Which is, um, I'm not sure, let me take a look. It's, uh, it's the, the VRP Dyno Point 2.0. Uh, right here. At, uh, here's their business card. I don't know if I put that up there. They do have um, other stuff there. Let's uh, bring up the dinos here. There we go. There's, there's the .20, the .30, and then there's a three-point special edition. They range from 160 to 250 so it is a little spendy. It is kind of, you know, out there. But if you're, if you're just building cars for your own enjoyment and your own, you know, thing there, this really isn't something you really need. Um, if you're building race cars to go out and race... You almost need a dyno just to make sure. Because it's really hard to put a car on the racetrack <coughs> and, you know, compare the chassis and get an exact lap time. Because your laps are always going to be different. Always different aspects of the car. You might be running two different bodies. You're not going to get an accurate comparison between the two cars by running them on a racetrack. By putting them on a dyno, you're taking all the variables out. And you're, you're actually going to be able to see which chassis is faster. So, that's what I said. Those are the tools that I have. Some of these are new. The dyno, the, the gear press, the idler tool expander, and my gear remover are all brand new. I just got those. Um, the, the scale electric, uh, the scale um, engineering uh, press I've had for a little while, but it's also fairly new. So, we're finally starting to get some tools that we need to show you guys how to do some stuff. Um, some other things that we're we're still looking into a couple of a uh, couple of tools like I said the wheel press or you know, the gear remover is another one I think we need to purchase um, and then we might might get a uh, there's a, a uh, pickup shoe bender that you can buy that you can get from RTHO as well I think also the uh, general dynamics also have or, uh, dynamic armatures also has one too so but that's what I have in my box. That's what we've been using. That's what we've been trying to get our freight cars fast. Trying to get them built up and get them going. And uh, we're going to show you a little more what we're doing in that next next episode. In two weeks, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about freight cars. And why freight cars are so fast. And what you have to go through to get one fast. And trust me, it's a tinkering aspect to get a, to get a freight car fast enough to compete with those guys if you guys remember the fray video from the from the fray those cars are quick and we're going to talk about why and what you what you gonna have to do to make your car fast so we'll talk about that um the next i even got the next episode after that plan the next episode after after next week's episode we're going to be reviewing the amrec km1 car so we're going to be doing this in in not the next episode but in four weeks we'll be doing this review in two weeks, we'll be talking about freight cars and why they're so damn fast and what you got to do to make them damn fast. And uh, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it helps out. Um, keep hitting that subscribe button. Keep hitting that like button. Keep hitting that share button. Keep sharing the videos out there. Um, we're up to 246 subscribers. And I thank everybody, all you guys out there, for every one of those subscriptions. Um, like I said before, and I'll say it again, the slot car community is one of the best hobby communities out there. I love you guys. I love all the the, 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 the all the comments and all the suggestions I'm getting and everything. So keep it keep it up, and keep racing slot cars. Keep on the clips. Keep on the keep the wheels on the downside. And I'll see you guys in two weeks. I'm out.